we had to make a choice in the kind of molecule we selected. Uh, and we had to make a choice driven by time to market. And we kind of stood back and said, you know, if time to market's really important, trying to prove to the world that we're developing a molecule that's going to redefine what diesel is, is probably going to be a pretty hard road that's going to add two to three years in certification. Mm -hmm. So we decided actually to go a very different way. We decided to look at the makeup, or what I like to call the cocktail of diesel, because diesel is really many molecules blended together. We looked at that cocktail and we asked ourselves, in that cocktail, which molecule could we blend at a much higher level inside the cocktail, still get diesel to perform at the current or better specification than is already approved, the ASTM spec for diesel? Uh, and based on that, could we get to market faster? And that's exactly what we did. So our molecule is a blend in current petroleum diesel. And, and blended up to 50%, we meet or exceed the specifications of current petroleum diesel. I see. And that's the same thing with jet. It's a different blend rate, but it's the same approach. We decided, let's not go invent the world and try to find a different molecule. Let's find a molecule that's currently in the cocktail that actually does what the world needs, and then let's blend that molecule at a much higher level than the industry has traditionally done, because we can make it at a lower cost. That's the, that's the approach we've taken. And, and the cost profile of making this stuff, how do you keep the cost at a breakthrough low level? It sounds very expensive to me. Yeah, not easy. Yeah. That, that's actually the second part of the magic, right? The first part of the magic is can you actually make the darn thing? The second thing is can you make it in a cost-effective way at scale? Uh, and we, we, have, we have focused that on several dimensions. Uh, one is um, keeping the manufacturing process as simple as possible. So we decided, you know, one of the key factors in cost is capital cost. You know, there's a, there's a fantastic product out today. There's two issues. Uh, it, it not very good for the environment, and it's very costly to produce, and that's what I'll call the coal-to-liquids method of making either diesel or jet. You get a great molecule. Uh, it's a fantastic product, but it costs, you know, 2 to $3 billion to build a basic plant. Uh, and... and uh, you know, you don't produce a lot when you spend 2 to $3 billion, and you have an issue with uh, carbon sequestration and what you do with CO2 for the environment. So our focus has been, actually, that could be our advantage. How do we pick a scalable process that's low cost? And we decided, you know, the good news is we're working with microbes, and they love fermentation. Mm. So we focused on a fermentation process as the manufacturing process to make the product. And by doing that, uh, you know, we also decided we wanted to make our scale up uh, what I like to call capital light. So instead of uh, building a complete new infrastructure for manufacturing our product, we decided let's go where there's uh, available capacity in fermentation today. Let's convert that fermentation capacity from doing whatever it does today to making diesel from a scalable feedstock. So that's the first part of cost is that exact model. You take an existing process, make sure it's low cost, and make sure you can scale it with low capital. Our conversion process today is we could take uh, an ethanol mill in Brazil uh, for about $30 million, convert it from making 40, 50, 60, 75 million gallons of ethanol a year to making the equivalent in diesel a year. And that's a pretty breakthrough model for how you go to market with our technology. We didn't say, let's start from scratch, let's start with what's out there, Let's find a low-cost conversion, and let's get that plant to make our product. The second, uh, and, and uh, I think as hard part of cost, is getting the microbes to be super efficient. Oh. Right? If you think about where we are today, and I'll actually go back even further, uh, artemisinin, uh, about nine months ago, uh, and we even say it differently, artemisinin's cost target is about $3,000 a barrel of oil cost equivalent. Now, I don't know about you. I mean, I, I'm not happy with the fact we are at 134 today. So we went up about $4 today, $4.67 a barrel, I think. So a pretty big increase in uh, price of oil today. Yet, it's still far off from the $3,000 a barrel cost equivalent that artemisinin is actually cost competitive at. Uh, in the last nine months, we've moved our microbe from a $3,000 a barrel of oil equivalent producer to our best, our best strain today 
is at about $175 to $200 a barrel. Hmm. So that kind of gives you a sense of the magnitude of change and what we're constantly doing to get the cost. It's really in those two areas, low-cost manufacturing process and ensure we get as much efficiency in that process as possible, and then highest efficiency strain to get the most conversion of the sugars uh, from the uh, fermentation process to product.